There are three primary aspects to the biomechanics of bicycles. The first aspect is the biological actions that are taking place inside the body. The second, the mechanical actions that take place on the bicycle itself. And finally, the third is the physical positioning of the rider. In the synapse between a muscle fiber and a neuron, the action potential is transferred to the muscle fiber via neurotransmitters released from synaptic vesicles and captured by receptors on the muscle fiber membrane. An action potential is formed and travels down the membrane of the muscle fiber. It reaches the interior of the cell by traveling down transverse tubules. It is able to reach the sacroplasmic reticulum, which is essentially a pouch that contains calcium, and causes its gates to open, therefore causing calcium to be released into the sacromere. Action potentials are caused by the inflow and outflow of ions. In the resting state of the nerve cell membrane, which is at negative 70 millivolts, both the sodium and potassium gates are closed and equilibrium concentrations are maintained across the membrane. A stimulus is received by the dendrites of a nerve cell which causes some sodium channels to open and so sodium flows into the cell. Once the threshold is reached at negative 55 millivolts, more sodium gates open and sodium ions flow into the cell, raising the voltage rapidly to 30 millivolts. This process is referred to as depolarization. At 30 millivolts, the sodium gates close and the potassium gates open, allowing for the outflow of potassium and the inhibition of the inflow of sodium. This causes the voltage to drop dramatically to roughly negative 90 millivolts. Since the voltage is lower than the resting potential, this process is referred to as hyperpolarization. The reason hyperpolarization occurs is because the potassium gates are slow at closing. Hyperpolarization is important because it prevents a neuron from receiving another stimulus during this time. The cell membrane eventually is able to reach its resting potential once again due to the influences that control the equilibrium potential. The sacromere is composed of four structures, which are the Z-disc, the M-line, the thick filament, and the thin filament. The thick filament is attached to the M-line, while the thin filament is attached to the Z-disc. The thick filament is composed of the protein myosin, while the thin filament is composed of the proteins actin and troponin. When calcium is released from the sacroplasmic reticulum, the calcium causes the displacement of troponin and therefore exposes actin. Myosin heads bind to the actin and conduct a step-like motion across the filament. The thick and thin filaments slide with respect to one another using ATP as a source of energy. This sliding together causes Z-disc to be pulled closer together. Contraction of the whole muscle fiber results from the simultaneous contractions of all the sacromeres. Once power is delivered from the body to the pedals, that power is then subjected to mechanical drag forces. These forces can be split into two parts, roller bearing chain efficiency and ball bearing efficiency. The reason that we discuss these forces together is because they are both roughly constant. More specifically, they are not correlated to speed. The first step along the line is through the chain. Roller bearing chains are surprisingly efficient. Roller bearing chains are comprised of many simple bearings composed of a roller, a ring which rolls around a pin, and a pin which holds the chain together. These rollers allow the chain to increase the time that force is applied. This reduces the load on the chain and lets the chain shrug off the drag otherwise applied to a non-roller bearing chain. The roller bearing chain does this at up to 98.6% efficiency. Ball bearings, located in the bottom bracket and wheels, are the next step along the transmission power line. Ball bearings are used where one part of the system is static, i.e. the wheel axle relative to the hub shell and the bottom bracket shell relative to the crankset axle. These bearings are generally not specifically for bicycles. This fact makes the bearings significantly less efficient than they could be. Most ball bearings are packed for industrial applications. These applications generally see stresses and speeds that bicycles never achieve. This means that they are overpacked. Research shows that to optimize the lubrication slash drag in a bicycle ball bearing, ball bearings should be packed with light grease lubrication now we'll focus on the physical position of the rider. At high speeds becomes one of the main areas of energy loss for cyclists. Many different factors can affect the aerodynamics of a cyclist, but one of the easiest things to change is the positioning of the body. The force of air resistance is given by the equation seen here. Rho is the density of air, V is the velocity, A is the frontal area of the moving body, and C is a number related to the shape of the object. Research by Fintelman and others has found that the torso angle has the largest effect on aerodynamics, 
with a horizontal back being the best position to reduce drag. This is because the frontal area A is being reduced. As well, Chabreau and others studied the effects of elbow positioning and found that joined elbows reduced the drag by as much as 37.7 newtons as compared to the classical elbow positioning. By pulling the elbows in, the shape of the cyclist is able to be changed to lower the constant of drag C.